So let's address the elephant in the room. It's this chunky thing or what you want to call it. It's one massive chunk of an AIO liquid cooler. This is the Arctic Freezer 2 420 ARGB. What's up people? My name is Vlad. Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to see what makes this literally the best AIO on the market. Spoiler alert, maybe not the prettiest one, but it is great at cooling. Anyhow, a little disclaimer, Arctic did send this cooler for me to review and I gotta say this at the beginning that I am not obligated to say anything other than my personal thoughts about it and no one else has seen this video prior to its release. So with that out of the way, let's see what's in the box and how it performs compared to the other 360 AIOs and similar coolers out there. And by box, I mean this triangular-ish shaped box. So let's see what we have here. There is an Intel LJ1700 upgrade kit, which is nice because 12th gen Intel CPUs now require a new mounting solution. So if you have any older cooling solution, you might need an upgrade kit as well. There is also a mounting kit for all other sockets and a little amount of the MX5 thermal paste. And here is the behemoth itself, one heck of an AIO. This is the largest AIO you can get now, the 420 size, meaning it has three 140 mm fans and this time they are addressable RGB fans as well. The pump is not the prettiest one out there because of almost every AIO out there, the pump comes with some sort of RGB lights, mirrors, effects and whatnots, but here the pump is really slim and it has no RGB, which is a bit strange because it's ARGB now, but it does have one small 40mm fan here, which is used for cooling the VRMs on the motherboard. And personally, I think that this solution is excellent. Fan is not loud at all, you can't hear it, and for that matter, the whole AIO is not audible at all. Pump can't be heard at all while operating, which is super nice if you are planning on building a quiet editing machine, for example, like I did here, where silence is valued. But with this one, it's not only silence, this one performs too. The square copper contact plate is not machined down to a complete mirror finish, but it's very smooth. The surface covers most CPUs on the market, but will not cover a Threadripper processor, so for which the Freezer 2 coolers have no stock support for out of the box. But for Ryzen CPUs, they offer offset mounting points as well, which in practice cools the Ryzen processors much better as it is in direct contact with its hotspots. The pump is the in-house variant, the result is greatly reduced humming and higher efficiency. Like the other components, the pump is also PWM controlled. This leads to a significantly lower noise level at low and typical loads, but also to much lower power consumption with a maximum of 0.8 watts at no load and 2.3 watts under normal load and a maximum of 6.78 watts under full load for the entire AIO without illumination. There are two large tubes going directly there are to the center of the pump and directly. these are not rotatable at some angles they but have they have length enough length to accommodate front, top, front, top or bottom, bottom install, install options of the radiator. The RT cooling is using high density rubber for minimal long term evaporation that should last for the lifetime of the cooler with no filling or service ports to be found here. The hoses are protected by a nylon sleeve with a circular dual silver thread design. Chrome metal press fittings are used to secure the tubing on both ends. Through one of the tubes, wires are going all the way to the radiator for the connection of all the fans and ARGB connection as well. It's a neat solution as all the wires are at one place. The radiator is 458mm in length, 138mm in width and it's 38mm deep all the way up to 65 mm with fans installed. This is not your standard thickness radiator, which also gives this cooler an edge over the competition. So in practice, with this much volume of the radiator, the water needs more time to reach its maximum thermal point, which in return means your CPU will be kept cooler longer during maximum stress testings, for example. Fans are already mounted on the radiator for the exhaust orientation or the mounting on top of the case. So if you want to use the cooler on the front, you gotta reposition them. These are the famous P fans by Arctic, the P14 PWM ARGB model to be precise. They are high static pressure fans ranging from 200 to 1900 RPM. 
they all come with rubber anti-vibration pads on each side for reduced vibrations. But they come with one flaw, the short PWM cables. Honestly, too short. I had issues mounting in the fractal torrin case, they need to be a bit longer or to include some sort of extensions. Same goes for the ARGB cables. Maybe you would not have this issue, but in this particular case, the fractal torrent, where you would need to position the radiator from one side of the bracket and fans to the other side to sandwich it in between, you have to connect the cables after doing all that. And yep, good luck doing so. Also, this is not an issue with this AIO particularly, but with the torrent case. Bottom rails would need to be cut to accommodate this AIO, so this goes as a warning that you pay attention as this AIO is not for every case out there, so do your homework before you decide to buy it. Here you can see on the graphs that the performance is absolutely the best amongst the tested coolers. While it certainly cools better than 360 AOs, the difference is not that big in maximum temperatures, but what is is the time needed to achieve that maximum temperatures, which is far less with the Arctic Freezer model. It is priced at 142 euros, which is actually less than some 360 AOs, and it does represent a better option for high workload machines, which require better cooling. But what is also interesting with this cooler, my idle temperatures were 10 degrees less than with 360 or 280 AO. And all those middle temperatures, or what I like to call everyday use temperatures, while gaming, doing everyday tasks and all, all those temperatures were lower by 8 to 10 degrees. The MX-5 paste is doing its thing as well here, so what I did just for the sake of the test is adding 3 more fans for the push-pull config, it did not yield more than 2 degrees, better temperatures at max, but it certainly gave my GPU more needed airflow, so I left them there. So to sum all my experiences with it, does it cool the best? Well, yeah it does, it has impressive maximum temperatures and also temperatures while gaming, you know that mid-range for everyday use. Is it quiet while working? Well, the pump is super quiet, even with an included 40mm fan for the VRMs, it's inaudible. Fans on the radiators can reach 50 decibels at max, but while in general use, you would not notice them more than any other fan in your system. Is it relatively cheap or expensive? I say it's properly priced at 142 euros and backed with a 6 year warranty. But is it easy to install? And yeah, it is, but cables on the fans might give you trouble in some PC cases, which also brings us to the biggest drawback. It's not for every case out there. Please do your research when and if you decide to buy this AIO, as your case need to be big enough to accommodate it. For now, Fractal models, the Define and the Torrent range accepts it. Corsair Obsidian series and very few others. As always, huge thanks for watching guys, make sure to check my other videos and subscribe to the channel for more future content and I'll see you in the next one.